Minneapolis, Minnesota. A city with a rising hoop scene, but not considered a traditional hotbed for producing NBA talent. That being said, in the summer of 2012, a tall, scrawny third grader by the name of Chet Holmgren would attend his first AAU basketball practice. A moment that very few realized at the time would cement the future of the city's basketball legacy. I first met Chet in third grade uh, when he walked into practice with his long khaki shorts. Uh, his collar t-shirt and his little busted kicks. I showed up to the first practice in cargo shorts uh, and I had a bowl cut. I was not ready for, for AAU basketball yet. I was having a basketball tournament. He's probably about big as a pencil at that time, but really long and, and, and frail and really weak. I think I cried after the first week of practice, every practice, because um, I, I just couldn't handle it. He looked like a big thing of string tees, you know, just looking goofy out there. I kind of took him under my wing. I got my little brother, and uh, now he's like my little big brother because he's seven feet. Prior to hitting a major growth spurt entering high school, Holmgren had been developed with guard-like skills from a young age. A basketball foundation that would help him develop a unique play style, one that few players his size have ever possessed. From getting just beat down by Jalen and them over and over again, it, you know, you become a product of your environment. And one thing me and Larry Suggs, are big on in our program is toughness. What he's doing right now is not a surprise. It's just validation of what me and myself and, and the body of work that Larry Suggs has put in with him. And, he, you know, Chet's carried out everything we can do and some. As a, a youngster, he was coached uh, to be a shooter uh, in a lot of guard skills, so they didn't just stick him in the post. They taught him multiple skills. schools out there that never get the opportunity to have a seven-footer who can handle the ball, who shoots, who has a great attitude, who works hard, who you don't have to worry about in the classroom. Um, you know, he's very unique. combination of size and skill, Chet would continue his development over the course of his high school career. Having just led Minnehaha High School to its third state championship his junior year, alongside future top five pick Jalen Suggs, Holmgren had gained the attention of college scouts across the country. However, it was the summer of 2019 that would see his popularity, rise to another level. The beginning of that kind of AU season was when I like took off the basketball world to kind of figured out who I was. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I came out that first first uh, tournament on 17s and averaged like a triple double with blocks. So I'd say Steph Curry was the turning point of everybody knowing about me. The stuff he did to Steph Curry, we've seen him do it before, but it was Steph Curry. Everybody's matched up, and I'm looking around like, 
where's the last person like? And then I see Steph, I'm like, oh, all right, I'll go guard him. Like, he never scared, never backed down. Steph Curry went up for a free roll, and Chet beat it against the glass, said, get that out of here. Because Steph Curry, you know, Steph Curry started laughing. I think I blocked him one time on a backdoor layup. And then, like, I, I knew I was going to hit him with the drag in and out. I knew Chet was going to do something. I knew he was coming down to make a move because, you know, he does a little where he stops and hesitates and he starts to slow down and he went behind the back. Boom. And then he bit. Went on the first behind the back, so I just double wrapped it. And then he kind of hopped that way, so I got around him. Steph kind of jumped it. And when I seen him do the second one, I was like, oh. You know, coming down the middle of the lane, I know he's going to dunk it. He's got to end it off right. Steph, he was like, you got me on that one. And the next time down, if you look at the play, first play, he played, the check comes out on him, step back three, looks right at check. I don't remember what he hit me with, but he hit me with something, and it was kind of vicious. Pulled up from like 28 feet or something. And he's really cool. He's like, it's just one play, it doesn't really matter. And like, I have the same mindset, because as you know, somebody who jumps with everybody and everything, like, I've gotten dunked on my fair share of times, and like, it's the same mindset, you just can't worry about it next play, basically. And that moment happened, and that's when, like, all the little kids, you know, started knowing my name, and, like, everywhere I'd go, I'd get, like, little people to scream my name, ask for signatures and stuff, which was probably good that I had that early on, because, uh, like, I kind of got used to it, learned how to move, how to, you know, how to deal with it in regular life, you know? Like, nine months ago, nobody knew who I was. People thought I was just like this tall, skinny, white kid who couldn't really hoop. He was just there because he's tall. But now, like, people know who I am. People know what I can do. Like, I try not to pay too much attention to it. Uh, just kind of focus on myself and just kind of staying humble because, like, there's also been a lot of praise and good words said about me. Now the consensus number one prospect in his class, Chet Holmgren had more than earned the attention and respect of people across the country. His skill set was set to be unlike anything the college basketball world had ever seen. A player listed at over seven foot one, possessing a combination of ball handling and shooting combined with elite shot blocking. After a lengthy recruiting process, Holmgren would decide to follow in the footsteps of former teammate Jalen Suggs, making the journey across the country to Gonzaga. This ball picked up by Bolton. He's got Hickman up ahead. Nolan, the line to Holmgren! Holmgren challenged at the rim and just rejected Brown Soares. Now he brings it up again. He's going to take it all the way. Scores off the glass! Means he's more comfortable at the four, but they can move him to the outside and go tall. Look at Holmgren. Straight on for a trip. Yeah, it it it. Here it is. Here we go for three. Yes! <laughs> Good help by Bowen, but he left Holmgren. Holmgren's going to bring it all the way oh down. <laughs> Robert's trying to slice through the lane. Tough pass. Scott is rejected. One dribble to the basket. Might see it here. Oh, yes, right. Put it in the foul! During his time at Gonzaga, Chet would separate himself from every other big in the class, having been named WCC Defensive Player of the Year and Newcomer of the Year, averaging a near double-double. Along with 3.7 blocks per game, his play style had proven to be effective at the highest level of college hoops, earning him projections at the very top of the upcoming NBA draft. It's kind of surreal. I put in all the work to get here. I can't really do anything else to affect any type of outcome. So now it's just kind of exciting for the moment. NBA Draft 2022, all the rest, ready to go. Let's do it. It was pretty much my whole life leading up to that week. Obviously, like the whole day, like it, it's impossible to have a bad day on that day. But everything before actually getting drafted was just like almost agonizing because like you didn't want to overlook all the moments leading up to it. But at the same time, you wanted to hurry up the show and, and get to the good part. With the second pick in the 2022 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Chet Holmgren. 
from Gonzaga University. It was a crazy moment. I didn't know like how I was gonna react. I kind of lived it out in my head so many times that it didn't like catch me by surprise. It was just kind of like a reassurance and I was on the right path. This is where I want to be. You know, this is a great organization, great city, great fan base to be in, great people, and you know, a great vision for the future. Joining an exciting young core that featured rising star Shea Gilgis Alexander and talented guard Josh Giddy, Chet Holmgren was seen as the missing piece needed to take the Thunder from just a fun team to a legitimate contender. And in the 2022 Summer League, Thunder fans and the rest of the league would get a glimpse at what the NBA's newest unicorn was capable of. Happens for the Jazz. The ball has to move. And they have to find an answer for the unicorn. Yeah, Jazz are having to work for those kind of shots right here. They're highlighting Chet again. Holmgren, one on one against the wall. Takes the bump now. The what? jumper pulls the string. Here's Law, baseline. Takes it right at Holmgren. To come, we'll have the Pelicans and the Blazers next. Another block. Simpson with a miss. Holmgren. We try to get one a game. Holmgren with a sidestep three. Butter. Seven foot one. The total package. Holmgren. Wow. Holy cow. As the offseason progressed, Chet would continue to develop his game through intense workouts and NBA talent filled pickup runs. In an effort to prep for his rookie season, Holmgren had searched out the best hoop sessions across the West Coast. And soon, he'd receive a text from former NBA great Jamal Crawford that would change the trajectory of his career forever. So it's like Thursday or Friday in August. You know, my guy, Nolan, my teammate from Gonzaga, he has an annual youth camp for the kids in Seattle. Then JC, he hits me. And he's like, you know, come through. It's going to be a movie. Like, this is going to be, like, something that's, you know, never been done in Seattle before. At first, I'm like, JC, man, you know, as much as I want to, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to this one. And then, you know, I remember I'm sitting in the car thinking, I'm like, I've never really said no to an opportunity to hoop. And I don't think there's a better opportunity to hoop outside of an NBA game. Like, I don't know, something in me wouldn't let me just you know, sit out, and on top of that, I'm in the city already. So, you know, an hour later, I text JC back. I just text him, save me a jersey. Yeah, the environment is crazy. When you involve NBA players, it's gonna be a big headline, and uh, everybody's gonna wanna be there, but, you know, this was just different. Like, I've been to, I was at the crossover two times before that, and both times it's a line out the door. People are waiting, camping out to get in. The gym got to capacity, and they had to close the door. We didn't even get to the start of the game before the fans stormed the court. It was one of the most wild atmospheres, you know, I've ever been a part of. Somehow, we were able to clear the court and start the game. And, you know, I just remember, you know, the game starts. We probably go down and back, down and back three times. And, uh, you know, a whole lot changed from there. There was like a tip pass to a steal or something like that. And LeBron ends up getting the ball. And uh, it's just like, it's any normal fast break. He takes a dribble and then tries to cut across and then finish on the other side. And I just remember, uh, you know, backpedaling and jumping to contest. LeBron misses the shot and the ball is going down the other way. It's like, now it's like a fast break the other way. I'm backing up at this point, kind of sliding sideways. And then I try to go forward. I take like three or four steps and I'm just like, what? Like, something just feels weird. Like, I thought like the air bubble in my shoe had popped or something. Cause like, I'm not feeling any pain right now. I'm like telling the coach, I'm like, sub me out real quick. I'm on a bench. I take my shoe off and I'm like feeling my shoe. Nothing wrong with my shoe. So the first thing I do is I hop from the bench down to like the little locker room area. I'm like down there trying to like walk on my foot and it's just like not what it's supposed to be. You know, at this point I'm calling my agent. I'm like, it's not good. I was like, I gotta go to the hospital right now and get imaging and see what this is. I'd never been injured in my life. Never missed more than a week. The second overall pick, Chet Holmgren, is undergoing tests. Chet Holmgren is going to miss 
the entire upcoming season for the Oklahoma City Thunder. The kid is a, a tremendous young talent. This is just a devastating blow. I'm really sad for him. There's a lot of emotions. Obviously, you guys know what it's like, you know, to come into the league. You know, you guys got these aspirations, all the shit you've worked hard for, and then it was like, it was like, just ran into a wall, and there's nothing I could do about it. Before that, I'd never been hurt for longer than a week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. I've never really missed basketball, and you know, that's tough when you're not hooping, especially like that's the first time I've ever not been able to hoop, and it's tough because like, you know, whenever. You know, something doesn't go my way or, you know, I'm pissed off or something. You know, I just go hoop, go compete, let it all out at the gym or whatever. And, you know, not being able to do that, you know, it's tough. I had surgery uh, and then for six weeks I was on a scooter, just shooting on a scooter every day. And then from there it was like crutches and then one crutch and then walking with the boot. And then, you know what I'm saying, it was just step after step. And I probably wasn't walking normal until, I mean, I had a second surgery to get the hardware out. So. Mm. You know, it was it was months. You know, I had the hard days, the good days. Uh, you know, the days where I felt like I was making a lot of progress, and then the days where it felt like the same days yesterday. Um, you know, I just tried to kind of stay level-headed through it. It's, it's just good having like the people behind you, not only like my family and friends who've like always been behind me, but like you know, from the medical staff and the front office and the coaches, just seeing like the process that we went through every single day and like how much they worked with me, like it really showed like how much they, you know, Fuck valued you, me yeah. and, you know, I had to, I couldn't take that for granted. So like it helped me lock in even more, you know. After a lengthy rehab process, Chet Holmgren would make a full recovery entering the 2023 NBA season. He had watched his Thunder teammates make a leap the previous season and now joined a core roster that was officially ready to take on the league. As the new regular season tipped off, there was no question that Holmgren was on a mission to remind the basketball world who he is. And so far, that's exactly what he's done. Holmgren spinning on Wiggins. Nice up and under. What a ball by the rookie. He's got 12 in the game. Holmgren tees it up from downtown. Holmgren thought about the three, drives it. Got the finish and one. Shit. Double team on the perimeter again. J Dub. Oh, a little Euro step, but there it's Holmgren to clean it up off the miss. So Holmgren, the trail three, steps into it, and Chet Holmgren ties the game in 102. Holmgren sizing up a good defender, and Allen. Holmgren with handles, spins, fires. Boy, that is a beautiful offensive move. And no surprise as he knocks down his first shot. And there is Ogun. Chet Holmgren, a rookie. Okoro. Holmgren again. Little hey. go. And Chet Holmgren. Giddy has to find somebody. Finds Holmgren. The turnaround shot to tie it. And Chet Holmgren with the three. And the buzzer ties it in. As the 2023-24 season is still underway, it's impossible to predict how Chet's second chance at a rookie season will play out. Holmgren currently finds himself playing a major role on a contending team in the Western Conference, putting up consistent numbers on a high percentage shooting from the field, all while protecting the rim at a high level. However, it's clear that the most significant aspect of Chet's first year in the league isn't necessarily the numbers he's producing. While he's playing a large role as the leader of OKC's front court, it's his impact on the structure of the game itself that deserves some recognition. Alongside fellow rookie Victor Wimbanyama, we're seeing the ushering in of a new generation of hoopers. A type of player that had been foreshadowed for decades. Players who break every mold placed on them by the normal boundaries of the game. Pushing the limits of what we understand a seven-footer should be capable of doing on a basketball court. There's no way of knowing how the careers of Chet and Victor will play out. 
But the impact they've had on the game has already been felt from the moment they step foot on the floor. They've shown that there's a generation of skilled bigs coming. Seven footers who can alter the game on both ends of the floor and do so at a high level. The blueprint is right in front of us. It's only a matter of time. But until then, we'll continue to enjoy the unicorns while they're still rare, tuning in nightly to see players like Chet and the new generation of basketball keep us on the edge of our seats. Thank you.